In my last video, I dealt with volcanoes. But, you know, the Lord's been teaching me that there's more to it than what I spoke on. He's been teaching me more things, especially out of the book of Isaiah, chapter 14. Let's go with the first verse. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the stranger shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of of Jacob. This is a work. This is a dispensation of the 144,000. Don't get confused that the nation of Israel has the mercy of God. No, they do not because they don't have the Christ. You don't have the Christ, you don't have the mercy. Now, if you go down to verse 5, it talks about the great salvation of God, how he has broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of rulers. Verse 6, he who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger, is persecuted and none hindereth. I believe that's talking about the nation of Babylon. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Hallelujah. That great evil, that great evil country of that day is brought down and people are singing. Yea, verse 8, yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon saying, Since thou art laid down, no feller is come up against us. And that's what we're waiting for today, with for all the tyrants to be laid down. So no feller, no feller can fire us from our jobs. No feller can force mandates anything. And no feller can do anything to us. But we just have, we'll just be praising and thanking God with singing. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Now, I believe these verses in Isaiah has more than do with the contemporary time when they were written. No, I believe it as it transcends time into our day and age. Right now, today, while people are suffering, while people are sick, while people are shut in, while people are persecuted. Yes, this deals with our age as well as their age, but we're in the we're on. We're on the verge of singing, but God has yet to act. Well, sure, God acts, you know, in a limited way. You know, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, they got the power over a quarter of the land. So, you know, a quarter is always being judged. and uh, uh, But he's going to act a lot, a lot grandiose than what you see by the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Yeah, I'm talking about seal six. A lot of you are probably tired of hearing about seal six, but it's very important. It's a global catastrophe that's going to happen. Now, a lot of Christians have prayed for judgment. And I listen to this in uh, Chronicles 7, verse 13. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Those are God's people he's talking about there. Think if he would shut heaven to them or send locusts or pestilence among the people, and that's his people, his children. Think of what he'd do for the pagan, for those into witchcraft, those into sinful living apart from God. Think of what it's going to be when God rids the land from the evildoers, separating the sheep from the goats. Now, because of God's hesitancy, if I could say it that way, hesitancy from judging the wicked, you know, and sending down fire from heaven and consuming them all at once, God has sent forth his missionaries, his evangelists, his people of God with a word of reconciliation. Yeah, God loves us that much. He's going to give us chance after chance after chance, but you know, Chances will end. Dispensations will come. And one of the dispensations, yeah, I know you're tired, still six. 
dispensation of wrath, a day of wrath, a period of wrath. It's not just in one 24-hour period, but it's days and years of wrath. I believe it's, it could be a little over a thousand years. Well, how could that be? You got Christ's kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. You got a thousand year reign of Christ. Well, look at the end of the thousand year reign and God has to send forth fire from heaven to consume enemies. Enemies that are still here hiding out, still or, or acting like they're of God, but they're not. Yeah. And then... Uh, Satan, you know, he's he's bound up for a thousand years. Then he's let loose for a little time, and he can deceive the world that fast. That many enemies coming at the people of God, and God just, you know, sends fire from heaven, consumes them all. That's the wrath of God. And then you got the judgment seat of Christ, the judgment of God, where he's going to bring back all the dead people who ever lived, you know, without Christ. And... Uh, and if your name's not found written in the book of life, you're cast into the lake of fire. It's that simple. If you're for Christ, you're saved. But if you're against him, you're cast into the lake of fire to suffer the eternal pangs of hell forever and ever, a continual suffering. I've done this. I've done the work. I've done the study. I know it's forever. It's forever condemnation. It's forever judgment. It's forever shame and everlasting contempt. Yeah, I did the study. I read the verses, and hell is a real thing. It's not a joke. Okay, let's get back to Isaiah. Chapter 14, verse 9. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It has raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nation. I don't think that's a verse just for Lucifer. You know, it, it pertains to Lucifer, but it also pertains to his children. All those have taken the side of Satan. Listen to it in a new, in a new way. You may not have seen it before. Hell from beneath is moved for you. It's moved for you. You Christ rejecter. It's move. It's moving. What's moving? What's moving? Hell. Hell is below, beneath. If you've done any kind of study, heaven is high up. Hell is low. And in other parts of the earth, hell is where the magma is, the fire that's not quenched. It's uh, the core is like a star within the center of the earth. And then you got magma, different layers of heat. And it's hot. It's hot down there. And the minute, the minute you die Christless, you descend, you don't ascend, you descend. Whether it's a light or a tunnel, it always goes down into the nether parts of the earth. And guess what? This verse is saying, hell from beneath is moved for thee. Could that be the reason why we're seeing a lot of active volcanoes? It's getting ready. It's getting ready to receive thee. It's getting ready to meet thee at your coming. That's right, your coming. You're lost. You're laughing at the Bible. You're laughing at the people of God. You're laughing at Scripture. You're ignorant. God has showed you mercy. He has showed you grace, you know, not to, to consume you in a moment. He showed you enough grace to make up your minds who you're going to serve. You're going to serve God or you're going to serve Satan. And since you have refused, since you have rejected his son, you have not kissed his feet, Guess what? Hell is moving. These volcanoes and the magma is moving upward. It's moving. It's moving. There's a spiritual essence to that fire, that heat. And it's coming. It's coming for you at a moment. And I think that's what you're seeing. A lot of active volcanoes. And I think that's what God's been telling me in my heart. Look, hell is moving upward. All right, let's get down to business. What can you do? Okay, so you don't believe in God. You don't believe in the Christ. What can you really do? You can repent, change your mind. Yeah, turn over a new leaf. <laughs> yeah, you just turn it over. You, you, you stop being an enemy of God. You become a true enemy of Lucifer, of Satan. 
You put down your witchcraft. You put down your idols. And uh, you go to God and you just, you know, with love, you just say, be merciful to me, a sinner. You have not because you ask not. You got to ask. You know, that you go to hell because you didn't ask. You know, I'm undecided. I, I'm not taking Satan's side. I'm not taking God's side. I'm safe. No, you're not safe. You have not because you don't ask. And you never ask. Are you going to go to hell just because you didn't ask for it? I'm not talking about you joining a church. I'm not talking about you doing a bunch of religious, you know, ceremonial things. No, I'm talking about a relationship with Jesus Christ. You and him. (laughs) He died on the cross for your sins. We're not talking about churchianity. We're talking about Christianity. The one that died for your sins, he was buried three days. He rose from the dead victorious. What's the resurrection got to do with it? Well, if he didn't rise from the dead, neither or neither would you. It takes a resurrection to be raised into newness of life and to live gloriously with Christ. And there's so many benefits of being in Jesus. Oh, you inherit all the promises of God are yea and amen. Yeah, can you imagine? Jesus called the Son of God, and he's equally God. And he's calling us children of God, sons and daughters of the Most High. Oh, he'd give us anything in him. (laughs) Hallelujah. Glory to God. As long as it's holy and pure, he will grant unto us life eternal. We can explore the universe. We can have our own planets. I believe, yeah, I believe there's treasure planets. Things done for Christ will last. You'll have treasure, not on the earth, but heaped up in the heaven. Oh, yeah, start selling your goods and giving to the poor. Jesus said, you'll have riches in heaven. Not only in this age, but in the age to come. What's that mean? Not only in this age. He's not talking about, you know, that you'll have treasure caves or treasure planets on this earth at this time. He's talking about, but you will. In outer space, there's probably a planet already has some of your treasure if you're a Christian. Yeah, it's already there. Your treasure. And anytime you want to go be with Jesus, you can just, you know, through the spiritual door, just enter in and you can worship in the house of the Lord, which will dwell forever and ever. And if you want a city home too, I, you know, God has prepared for us a city home in New Jerusalem. Yeah, you got that too. Yeah, oh, I believe if you're a farmer, you got farmland. <laughs> and if you're a city, you can be a city goer too and have a city home. You know, just like the rich, they have many houses, many places of worship. And, uh, but we got that one place seated in the heavenly places right now. Christians are actually in heaven right now by their spirit. We can't see it because we got the veil of flesh, but we're seated in heavenly places in Christ. And that'll never change. That's why your access point to God is always through Christ. You want to go to the throne room, you know, in the future when you're not limited by this fleshly body, you will be there. Glory to God. See you later. Goodbye.